So I'm absolutely on my bullshit again. While the soldering iron is warming up, I will let you know what's going on. I need to attach a uh, jack to this old speaker cabinet because um, that's obviously, you can't plug that into an amp. I guess you could if you liked fire, hence soldering. Um, actually, the first time getting to use this, my wife, Miss Birdie, got this for me for my, I wanna say my birthday. It's been like a year. I just haven't had any projects, but it's so much nicer than the old one I have, so I'm excited to get to use it finally. A um, little bit about the speaker cabinet and why I am now doing this. My old boss gave it to me one night when we were drinking. It is an old projector cabinet, and a little while ago, I saw on Two Notes' Instagram that they had a, a new IR that was an old projector cabinet, and I commented on the post and said, oh, those are cool. I've got one of those, actually. A really nice, clean sound. And they said, oh, how does it compare to the IR? And I said, well, I don't have the IR, but if you want to hook a brother up, let me know, and, you know, I can do a little thing. And so they did, and I am. So that's what's happening right now. So I guess technically this is a sponsored video. No money exchanged hands, just some software. But so about the cabinet I have, I thought my boss told me it was a Bell & Howell, but to be honest with you, I'm not positive. The only thing I can say for sure is it is an old 12 inch Jensen in here. Um, I know it's Jensen because of the speaker code. I know it's old because it's the old six digit style. Um, the speaker is a C12Q. It's an old ceramic speaker, but it's got a bell cover on it with some um, little two prong things, which I assume are to do parallel extension cabinets or to, I guess, run an appliance off of the projector amplifier which I guess you could probably do. That might be fun, plug a lamp into this and see what happens. Maybe I'll do that. Oh, so that's disappointing. Anyway, I can't really tell you much more than that. It's pretty old, but it needs a jack. So I'm putting a jack on it. That's what's going on. Let's get to that. Important to do this in the right order. Ask me how I know. So you get your kind of cover on. Then your little protective sleeve. Let that fall. You have the actual jack. Tip is positive, sleeve is ground. There's no real indication which is which on this. Like this is clearly just like a lamp cable that somebody else soldered onto this thing like 50 years ago. Usually the convention is rib side is positive and I'm just going to go with that. Doesn't really matter unless I'm plugging in more than one speaker into the same amp. If I do that and they're out of phase, it'll sound kind of shitty. And if I do that and I find out that they're out of phase, I can fix it. Otherwise, I kind of don't care because it doesn't matter. So now, the part where you wish you had seven hands. So just like your grandpa taught you in shop class or whatever, you heat the work and just kind of let it get hot. And then you get your hand in front of the camera so you can't see anything. And then you just sort of feed the solder into the joint. And you don't need a ton. How'd I do? Fucking perfect. All right, next side. All right, that's speaker cable. So in terms of methodology, because I recorded the DI from the amp and the mic up cab at the same time. So everything is one performance, right? I'm not switching between performances. The only difference is the way those recordings are captured slash being presented. I had done the mic'd up cabinet with very minimal EQ and I did the IRs with just the stuff inside of two notes. And then I did a second version with the IRs where I had done some EQ to it to get it more like the way I wanted to sound. And I was tempted briefly to do a fourth version where I also EQ'd the you know, actual mics and I decided not to because you have to stop somewhere and um, this was already kind of spiraling rapidly out of control. So what you are about to be presented with is the identical video a bunch of times because I love watching myself and the various different sounds. Um, first will be like a mosaic kind of going through the whole song and then it'll be a couple individual parts pulled out so you can hear them right next to each other without your ear getting too acclimated and then it'll be the whole song three times so you can get that stuck in your head nice and firm like and um, hum it for the rest of your life.
first off, quick note, I put the real cab sound at the beginning and the end of that middle section to make it easier to compare the EQ'd IRs to the real cab. So it's like A, B, C, A. Um, and I think that highlights an interesting thing that I didn't expect. It was just like how quickly your ears acclimate to things and how very often when you switch between two things, you're really hearing the differences and not like really how the thing sounds. So that was interesting. I hope that comparison was useful to people. It was definitely illuminating for me. Um, and yeah, so it took me a while to finish this video holding the script because I wasn't really sure what my conclusion was. So every time I listened to that comparison you just heard, I'd want to go back in and tweak something with the impulse responses and then I'd load it back in and then I'd compare it again and I'd go and undo that and do something else. And I finally realized that part of my problem was I was focusing too much on trying to duplicate the specifications of my microphone setup inside the two notes box as opposed to simply following my ears and trying to find something that I liked the sound of. That's kind of a dumb thing to have to remember, but sometimes you have to remember that, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to follow our ears here. So my culpa, but once I did that, it became way easier and I got something I liked pretty quickly, actually. Um, just took me a while to realize I was going about it kind of ass backwards. So the cabinet and the IR don't really sound the same, aside from they sound like a rectifier because I'm using a rectifier, but that's not really that surprising because even if the the folks at Bommel had used the exact same cabinet I had, their single chain methodology and general intent behind the, the project would have all combined to make a different sound than I got in my room just here. Single chain equipment, stuff like that, that all makes sense. Things sound different, things sound different, you know, things are not all the same things, duh. But I want to talk about the intent part for a second because I think that's a little more interesting. I need a teleprompter. So when I mic up a cabinet, my goal there is to make something that I like for this one particular intersection of time and space. It's like I've got this thing, this idea, and I want to capture that. So when Two Notes or Neural DSP or whoever puts out a sound pack or an impulse response or whatever they're doing, they have to make something that has broad enough appeal to sell in enough quantity to make it worth the t investment in time and money, right? They have to make a broader appeal than to just the one person doing it. And it also has to be simple enough to use that it sounds pretty good before the user like starts fussing around with buttons. Um, and none of this is a criticism. And in fact, uh, I'm amazed that they can do it. It's astounding to me and it is so very cool. You know, when I was, a, I'm not even that old, I'm 33, I guess I'm old. But when I was a kid, and I wanted to record something, I could mic up my dad's PV Bandit with an SM57, and as anyone who has ever just thrown a 57 in front of a guitar amp, good lord, that doesn't sound the way you think it's gonna sound. You have to do some stuff. Or I had an early version of Amplitude. It was cool for the time, but it is, does not hold up, right? Like, especially from 2007 or something, it, you know. As an alternative to that, you had something, you get like a Line 6 Spider, like the first one with the insane Rockstar settings. And that also sounded typically like hot garbage. So the fact that you can get something that sounds really good, that's just in your computer, you just plug it in and you don't have to get your mom mad at you at two in the morning because you want to like jam out or whatever, is astounding that is the coolest thing ever and so the fact that it doesn't sound exactly like me chasing a specific sound with real microphones in a real room is not i think even a problem i think this particular the bommel howler i think this particular ir is pretty neat actually because one i like the sounds i was getting out of it and it's got some fun like shitty mic options to get like you know a little lo-fi section or a break or an intro if you'd like me to kind of do a little bit more thorough demo of it you know write write something in the comments and that might be another video topic but yeah it's a great sounding little thing and it's you know a little, it's different than the stock ones and that's super cool. I think it's really rad. I'll probably put out a little behind the scene video of some of the, like the nerdier stuff that went into making this because I thought my mic setup was pretty neat and you know, talk a little bit more about what I did to the in the two notes wall of sound stuff. But for now I am going to have some nachos. So um bye bye.